Hey guys, welcome to GameBed. Today bringing you a video for our weapon conversion series. And today we're going to be covering both the EM2 or rifle number 9 as well as the Intratech Tech 9. So we're going to be covering both these weapons here today, going through them both and jumping into some gameplay for a Cold War multiplayer just so you can see how these things handle. So backing out, we'll start with the EM2 or rifle number 9. There's really nothing we can change for this weapon. It really is the only thing you can create with this is the em9 the arctic warfare variant of this is what it is at base and you can't change that here in the game so this is a strange weapon for them to add because it was designed in 1948 to 50 it was only adopted for a brief period of time in 1951 and then was taken out of service so this is a very strange weapon especially if, if the timeline for cold war is 1983-84 it would have made much more sense for them to adopt the sa-80 or the original l85a1 However, they went with this, which is very, very old, and there was only 59 units built, so it really doesn't fit with the timeline whatsoever, unfortunately. But if we look at the weapon quickly, the Arctic Warfare variant of this is what we can tell from the pistol grip. It has that extra huge looping trigger guard here, so there's two trigger guards. It has that huge looping one, which is really the only trigger guard it would have had. They kind of left in the standard trigger guard here, and you can't take that Arctic Warfare variant on or on or off the safety there is in front of the trigger so you can see it there in front of the trigger sticking through where that extra trigger guard is for the arctic warfare variant that's where the safety is you have the fire selector here above the pistol grip and you can see it there that little push through button there above right behind the pistol grip you would push that through for uh safe semi or full auto and then you have the magazine release there here because this is a bullpup rifle very similar to the British SA-80 series of weapons. However, uh, design-wise, these are very, very different. It came with the standard one times optic built onto the built-in carrying handle there. You can see on top, just a standard one times optic. And then you had backup iron sights here. You can see this little flip-up pin here in the front above the handguard, as well as this little, you can see the aperture there to the left of the one times optic there. So you would line that up for backup iron sights with this front little uh, pop-up there that would flip up and down. And then you have the charging handle here on the right-hand side. So, interesting weapon. Fired a intermediary cartridge of the 208. And we'll jump, talk more about that once we get into the gameplay. So let's go to the Tech 9. So the Tech 9, again, very interesting weapon, kind of uh, associated with the gangster gun. This was produced from 1984 through 2001. Intertech is no longer in business. Now, we spice this one up a little bit because in real life and here in the base game, this weapon is semi-auto. And if we look at the muzzle options here, at base, this is a semi-auto, meaning a single-fire weapon as it is in real life. There's a burst repeater here that you can put on this to turn it into three-round burst, and then a full-auto repeater to turn it into fully automatic. So in real life, this was semi-auto. This is basic, It's basically just a pistol, um, single-fire. The problem is this thing was it was able to be converted to full auto, which is what it was done on the streets, which is why it got a really bad reputation. It was eventually put on lockdown of lots of regulations, different variants uh, during firearms after from the ATF. So here we can put on a full auto repeater just to kind of keep it with the general, uh, with the general population thinks of this weapon as it being fully auto. However, it really is not. And when you put this full auto repeater on, the rate of fire will actually be much slower than it would have been when you made the conversion to real life. The... Cons here, effective damage range, horizontal recoil control. If we go down to the, we'll skip the barrel as well as the body. Under barrel attachment, you could fit dip, with different variants like the KG-99 and things like that. You could fit on grips just like this. So this is actually accurate for the weapon. So upon the field agent grip for the vertical and horizontal recoil control. Cons here, the shooting movement speed at 30%. And then the magazine capacity, we'll go ahead and put on the 30 round magazine here. In real life, it came with 10, 20, 32, 36, 50, or a 72 round drum magazine for this thing. So we'll put on the 30, not accurate to what it would be in real life. We're two rounds off, but this is as close as we'll get with the magazine option there. Go ahead and put that on. And then for the stock, we'll go ahead with a no stock option because this was eventually designed or changed from an open to a closed bolt and they got rid of the uh, adjustable butt stock there on this weapon. So there was no would be no butt stock. One thing to know here is the iron sights are actually incorrect on this weapon uh they would be an open aperture in the front and a little bit different looking iron sights and then other than that we have basic you have the magazine paddle release there on the bottom underneath the trigger guard you have the magazine release would be above the uh trigger guard there in front as well as 
the rate of fire of the selector switch would be non-existent because it again is designed for semi-auto single fire however street wise it would be converted to full auto which uh was made this thing a problem so that's the final design for this weapon there's no really unique attachments with any of these really some ugly options here you can put on this if you want to put a wooden stock on your tech and I for some reason you can go ahead and do it the barrel length and real life varied quite drastically so you could go anywhere from 76 millimeters to 127 millimeters so really a few of these would be options that you could go ahead with um, you could definitely make some different types of variants with the task force the 7.7 rifle things like that however nothing really worth going too in depth with here since they were all designed in real life for semi-auto they're just pistols however like i said converted on the streets because they were easy to convert to full auto that's what was done so let's go ahead now we'll back out and we will actually jump into the gameplay for these weapons here just using them on we'll see the rate of, we'll actually start on moscow and you'll see the recoil control pattern so recoil on these the rate of fire for the em2 is very slow uh which is accurate to real life it would come in between 400 and i believe 600 rounds per minute so i'm not really sure what it is in the game it seems to be somewhere in the middle there slow rate of fire again it fires an intermediary cartridge that 208 cartridge that was designed specifically uh by the british military after world war ii however was deemed to be too small to be fired from a rifle not effective enough by the u.s military which is eventually why this thing they wanted something that was harder or bigger around the 762 by 51 nato and eventually this was taken out of uh, service after, like I said, only a short period of time. So you can see the rate of fire on this as well as the Tech 9. Tech 9, even though it's full auto, is much slower than it would have been in real life uh, when it would have been converted. But I'm kind of happy they did this for balance purposes in the gameplay. We don't need something like another Mac 10 that just fires at 1,000, 1,100 rounds per minute. So this seems to be both these should hopefully be balanced pretty well in Warzone in multiplayer they seem to be pretty decently balanced again the slow rate of fire for both of them makes it easier to control the recoil which is basically non-existent on these but again slow rate of fire easy to control so that's a good thing now if we talk about the EM2 first off again this was designed from 1948 to 1950 it's also known as rifle number nine and it fires that intermediary card to the 208 which I said was it designed specifically for this weapon after World War II and again NATO deemed it too small to be a rifle cartridge and they wanted the 762 by 51 nato round so the em2 could not adapt to that round uh it had a couple different variants that fired different calibers and they even tried the 762 by 51 didn't work really well had a lot of issues with that so it was eventually taken out of service however the british would eventually go back and adopt another bullpup weapon which looks similar to this being the sa80 in i believe it was 1984 was put into service you may know it as the l85a1 so that's where this weapon kind of takes its origins from however design wise they're very different they're really only similar thing is some of the features is on the outside with the bullpup features ergonomics things like that but it's really weird to me that they went with the em2 versus the sa80 i think it would have made a lot more sense to go with an sa80 however if you look at modern warfare we do have an sa80 in the game already so i can see why they may have opted to do that but again very strange weapon and there's really no uh different hand guards to even make this into i believe it was an xm60 or an xl60 it may have been called which was kind of an, a different upgraded variant of this that would fire that 762 by 51 i believe it fired it was made more so instead of wood more of plastic and polymer so very interesting weapon again uh had a couple different variants that fired different rounds the mass overall was 7.7 .7 pounds the length was 35 inches the barrel length was 24.5 inches which you have a couple different options but again the base barrel seems to be pretty accurate to the real life 24 and a half cartridge as we said was at 280 i may have misspoke and said 208 it's a 280 british round which again still smaller than what the nato wanted at the 30 caliber you also have the action being a gas operated uh flap or locked system the rate of fire 400 to 600 in real life it seems to be somewhere in there maybe around 550 here in the game and the muzzle velocity in real life would be 2545 feet per second with the effective range being 770 yards and in real life it did only come with that 20 round magazine which is why we're not going to use anything else here however you do have a bunch of different options here in game so that's rifle number nine or the em2 the arctic warfare variant of this now, if you go to the Tech 9, again, Tech 9 has that bad reputation for the gangster gun because it was used in a lot of mass shootings and on TV in the 90s. Uh, the Intertech designed this thing. They had the Tech 9, the Tech DC 9, the KG 909, and the AB 10 
were all blowback semi-automatic pistols. So semi-auto being single fire pistols. The problem with these were, like I said, that specifically the Tech 9 fired from an open bolt and was very easy to be converted to fully automatic. So you wouldn't really, or putting a repeater on the muzzle is not gonna turn this to fully automatic, but by making some adjustments internally to the weapon, you would be able to do this. So a bunch of different variants and modifications were made uh, due to firearms acts and the ATF pushback to try and make this thing harder to uh, convert to fully auto and eventually was discontinued and Intertech is no longer in service. But if we look at this weapon, designer was George, George Kelgren, Kelgren and the manufacturer Intertech. Again, George Kelgren was on the project for a while and then he rolled off. Production was 84 through 2001, so this fits the timeline of the Cold War era. Number of units built were five or two. 100,000, 57, and 257,434. So I'm trying to think at the same time that the EM-2, I wanted to go back and say that there was only 59 units of the EM-2 built, that British assault rifle we just looked at. 59 units, and that was designed again in the late 40s and taken out of service in 1951. So again, very unlikely that that would be around at all in the 80s. But flipping back to the Tech-9, 257,434 units built versus the EM-2's uh, 59 units built. So it makes much more sense the Tech-9 to be in this time period. And then again, the different variants you have with the KG-99, the Tech-DC-9, Tech-DC-9M, the AB-10, and the Tech-9M. So a bunch of different variants. And you also have the Tech-9S, which again, a lot of these were designed just open, closed bolt, different design features to try and get around the ATF regulations and make it more difficult to convert to fully automatic. The mass in real life was 1.23 to 1.4 kilograms. The length of the weapon overall, depending on the model, whether it was buttstock included or not included, was anywhere from 241 millimeters to 317 millimeters. And again, a lot of those later units had the buttstock, that retractable buttstock removed as they switched back to the closed bolt design. Barrel length anywhere from 700, or excuse me, anywhere from 76 to 127 millimeters, depending on the model. Again, a bunch of different variants here. They vary drastically. The cartridge was that 9 by 19 Parabellum or the 9 millimeter. The action was a blowback operated semi-automatic pistol. So again, this is a pistol. Uh, there's no select fire or anything on this, except for when you illegally converted it to fully automatic. Muzzle velocity was 360 meters per second, or 1,181 feet per second. The effective range being 50 meters or 160 feet. Feed system, as we said, was anywhere from 10, 20, 32, 36, 50, or even up to a 72 round drum mag. And the sights were only the iron sights. So very interesting weapon. Again, uh, this thing no longer produced after 2001. Intertech is out of business. And the fact that this thing was just so easily converted to full auto Gave it a really bad rap. It was also had very bad reliability, so it had constant jams, especially if you were switching to full auto. Good luck getting that thing to fire through a full magazine without throwing a jam, like a stovepipe or something like that. So definitely not the most reliable one, but especially when you illegally converted it to fully automatic, it would have a lot of problems, obviously. And it would have a high rate of fire, uh, probably somewhere closer to a thousand in real life. But again, not reliable, so if you in semi-auto, so if you convert it to full auto, it's definitely not gonna be the most reliable weapon. But let me know down below what you guys think of these weapons. Personally, I would have much rather have seen the SA-80 or the L85A1 instead of the EM-2. The Tech 9 I think, is a pretty decent addition. I, I think it fits a time period, so I don't really have anything to say about that. But the EM-2 just seems like a very weird weapon to add, especially without having any sort of conversion to this thing to turn it into an SA-80. However, I will say the Tech 9 having the three-round burst and the full auto capability for this weapon is actually pretty cool. I think it's the first thing they've ever done in Cold War to actually convert a weapon some way. So that's a pretty good, good addition. Let me know what you guys think down below. I think, again, these weapons overall a little bit lackluster. The EM-2 I would have liked to have seen swapped out for almost anything else. But let me know what you guys think. Are you happy with the Season 5 Battle Pass? What do you think of Season 5? And again, what weapons would you have liked to see versus what we got here? Are you happy with these weapons? And uh, what do you want to see in the future? I believe there's going to be one more season of support for Season 6 of Cold War before Call of Duty Vanguard rolls out with their Season 1 starting in, I believe, late November, early December. So let me know down below what you guys think. Till next time, this is Buffner Gaming, out.